What is up, FA Nation? This is Kevin Tompkins here with the Target Report bullet points. We're going to be condensing a lot of the Target Report into these bullet points here, the most actionable information that you can take with you to your waiver wire, to your fantasy leagues. Uh, we have our week one bullet points here. Of course, you can find this video every Tuesday here on the Fantasy Alarm YouTube channel, as well as the Target Report in writing on fantasyalarm.com every Thursday. So be on the lookout for both of those going forward. We're going to have those each week for the previous week's NFL action. Uh, of course, a lot happened in week one that we do have to digest here and break down. So we will go through all of that right now and how to approach everything for fantasy football heading into week two. To kick it off here, let's start with one of the biggest surprises in week one, Los Angeles Rams wide receiver Puka Nakua. With Cooper Cup out for the next several weeks, we do know who the Rams were going to trot out as their wide receivers against the Seattle Seahawks. Of course, that's Van Jefferson, Tutu Atwell, and Nakua. I just don't think anybody expected, I certainly didn't, uh, expected what happened in week one. 15 targets for Nakua, 10 catches, 119 yards. Nakua also ran 90% of routes per dropback, gobbled up 43% of the team's targets on the day. His 15 targets are the most targets by a rookie wide receiver in week one since targets became a statistic in 1992. Before I discuss how we react to Nakua's amazing week one, let's talk about his teammate first, Tutu Atwell, who had 119 yards receiving himself with a 90% route share, a much longer 15.8 yard ADOT. Both had excellent games. Both will be starting for the next several weeks with Cup sidelined. We just don't know what's going to happen with Cup moving forward. But at the very least, Nakua and Atwell have shown that they are players in this league. For Nakua specifically, not everybody can just go out and get 15 targets. That just does not happen uh, unless you're pretty good at earning targets. You have to be good. We've got a data point now that says Nakua is good. We're not talking about a player that hit on three catches for 158 yards and three touchdowns. That's a big red flag right there if you're looking at waivers. So for him to earn 15 targets, I say that's pretty bullish uh, for Puka Nakua. At worst, Nakua does have a legitimate claim to being the second option in this Los Angeles Rams offense and challenging Tyler Higbee. If you do see that 25 to 30% fab recommendation on the screen and are getting kind of that sticker shock, that's the going price. I think you have to be very aggressive with Puka Nakua on waivers here. So uh, that kind of recommendation, even going above, depending on your specific league, um, I think is certainly warranted for a player that has that spike week potential of earning 15 targets. Is he going to do that every week? Not, you know, I, I don't think so. But, you know, I think that it's very much in the cards for him if he does run into a game like he did in week one. And even if he comes down to like seven, eight targets a game, I think that's you're still talking about one of the top 30 wide receivers in fantasy here. As for Tutu Atwell, I'm definitely trying to grab him off of waivers right now. Uh, because there are obviously targets available on the Rams, certainly you don't have to spend as much on the uh, Fab or on waivers as a Puka Nakua. But the big plays are in Atwell's wheelhouse. He is going to be on the field with that longer ADOT. Next up, let's talk about Baltimore Ravens rookie wide receiver Zay Flowers. The Ballyhooed new look Ravens offense under offensive coordinator Todd Monken had some hiccups at the beginning of week one. But at the end of the day, there was only 22 pass attempts to go around in week one. But earning 10 of those targets from Lamar Jackson was the rookie first-round pick, Zay Flowers, who turned those 10 targets into nine catches for 78 yards. Now, I don't want to be that guy, but six of those 10 targets were RPO screens and pop passes, so there wasn't much downfield target earning going on by Flowers, as evidenced by his 2.8-yard average depth of target. It was a very Debo Samuel-esque showing for Flowers. It was very encouraging, however, to see Flowers being the focal point of the Ravens' offensive game plan without Mark Andrews in Week 1. You know, we typically do see rookies start out with a modest route rate and then go up from there as the season progresses. Odell Beckham had 100% route participation but only earned three targets. Rashad Bateman's routes were only at 57%, earning just three targets while rotating in with Nelson Aguilar, whether that's an uh, indication of how his foot injury is progressing, Bateman's I'm talking about, um, I think that remains to be seen, but I think his routes certainly go up from there. But I do think Zay Flowers is going to be a massive part of this game plan going forward, even when Mark Andrews is back in the lineup and healthy. 
I am wheels up on Flowers because I think they're only going to be continuing to design looks for him in the passing game, finding ways to get the ball in his hands. I think you have to be aggressive with him if he happens to be on your waiver wire uh, in your league. I think it's uh, 25 to 30%. I think it's a good number there. Maybe even bump that up a little bit more. Uh, if he's on your bench in your fantasy league and you have questions about your wide receivers or your flex, maybe some injuries have hit the position, I think St. Flowers just answered them for you in week two going forward. The last wide receiver I'd like to talk about, it's going to be Jaguars wide receiver Christian Kirk. Kirk's utilization in the preseason was a bit concerning as he was coming off the field in two wide receiver sets, giving way to Calvin Ridley and Zay Jones. That did continue into week one as Kirk played 37 snaps in 11 personnel, but gave way in 12 personnel when the uh, formation condensed to two wide receivers, only playing six of 21 snaps there. A shout out to Nathan Yonke of Pro Football Focus for those stats. Christian Kirk only ran 66% of routes in week one, put up a disappointing one catch nine yard line off of those three targets that he earned. Kirk ran 23 total routes compared to Ridley's 34 and 32 on the Jaguars' 35 total quarterback dropbacks. So the ceiling for Kirk going forward is much lower than last season when Kirk was playing in those two wide receiver sets with Zay Jones. The slot receivers we want in fantasy are the Cooper Cup and Chris Godwin types. As we talk about, you know, Andrew Cooper has talked a lot about uh, the slot receivers that we should be targeting, the guys that will play the slot in three wide receiver sets, but when the uh, formation does condense to two, they do stay on the field and play on the outside. That's not happening with Christian Kirk here. So while he's part of this ascending Jaguars offense that'll get a ton of opportunities to score, he's just going to be seeing less time on the field than Ridley, Jones, even Travis Etienne or Evan Ingram. There's a lot of mouths to feed in this offense. And if Kirk's not going to be on the field for a lot of those opportunities, I don't think that bodes well for him going forward. So I think we have to downgrade him from the wide receiver to uh, where he was being drafted at. You know, you have to spend upwards of a late fourth. Uh, fifth round, sometimes into the sixth round for a Christian Kirk. Now we have to downgrade him to about a wide receiver three, uh, possibly even wide receiver four or flex territory. 